Hey everybody, uh, so in the last Nest.js video, uh, we just went through some basic getting started steps. We just looked at setting up the Nest.js CLI, and then we also made a simple get request from our Ionic application to a Nest.js server, uh, just to return a simple value. Uh, in this video, we're going to start looking at how to do something a little bit more complex, and that is sending a post request. And so unlike a get request, a post request can actually send a data payload along with that request to the server. And then we can also get the response back from the server still. Uh, so where we might use a get request to pull in data from the server, perhaps uh, a list of uh, posts, for example, uh, we might use a post request to uh, do something like create a new post or create a new user on the server because we can send a bunch of data along with that. And so when we make this request, uh, any request we send to the server, we'll be able to inspect everything that comes along with that request, including the data payload, and do uh, whatever we want with that. Now in the case of Nest.js, we actually use something called data transfer objects, and they define uh, the type of data that we're expecting to send through. And it's just sort of a case of uh, this sort of extra Nest.js layer on top of things, uh, which makes the coding a bit easier for us. Uh, it's going to make it easier for us to retrieve that data that we're sending through and work with. And it also makes sure that we're getting the data that we expect as well, uh, which is a, a common sort of theme with a TypeScript based applications. Uh, we define types for our data uh, so that we know we're always dealing with what we expect. So in this video, we're gonna go through another pretty simple example. This time we're going to post some data to the server. Uh, we're gonna grab that and see if we can log out some values, send some data back, and hopefully we can start understanding how a post requests work in Nest.js. Okay, so on screen now, I've got the application that we built in the last uh, video. So this is our server that just has a posts controller, and we've set up a, a get a method on here that's going to allow us to make a get request to the posts route and that's going to return this uh, array of posts. So if we make a request to when this server is running to uh, localhost forward slash posts, if we make a get request, it's going to trigger this. Uh, but let's say we also want to have a route that will allow us to create a new post by sending some data to our server rather than just taking data from the server. So in that case, what we can do is uh, we can set up a, a post down here. So, and I hope the terminology isn't too confusing here because I'm using uh, posts as in literal uh, like forum posts. And I'm also using the terminology post to refer to a HTTP post request. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Hopefully that's not confusing. So if we set up another method and we'll decorate this one with post, we could create, uh, create say, a, uh, a create method. And so now if we make a post request instead of a get request, we are making the request to the same URL. And let me just delete that, which got auto imported for some reason. Uh, so we're making a request to the same URL. It's going to be local host forward slash posts. Uh, but different methods are going to be triggered based on the specific uh, request we're making. So if that request is a post request, it's going to trigger this method now. Now there's a few more steps we need to take because uh, this isn't just a matter of triggering this method and returning some data. Now we need to actually accept and read some data that's being sent with that post request from our uh, Ionic application or whatever uh, front end you happen to be using. So what we need to do in order to uh, accept some data is to create something called a data transfer object or a DTO. And that's basically just going to describe the type of data we want to accept. So what I'm going to do here is create a new file in the post folder here. And I'm going to call this create posts.dto.ts. And we're just going to create a class in here that represents the data that we want to accept. So we're going to export a class called uh, create post DTO. And we're going to make that have a uh, we'll have a message property and uh, that's going to be a string and we'll also have an author property that's going to be a string as well. So when we're sending the data in the post request from our application, 
we're going to be supplying a message and an author. And so with that defined, we can import that into our uh, controller here. So we'll import create post DTO from, oops, uh, from create post DTO. So we're just importing that file in here now and grabbing that uh, create post DTO, the data transfer object. And now we just need to let this method know that this is, uh, we want to grab that DTO. And we can do that through the uh, body uh, decorator here. So basically that's going to, the body's going to provide us access to the, the body of the request that contains all of the data. And so it is possible just to access data uh, directly. You'd be able to see everything related to that request, which will of course include the data. Uh, but to get it working nicely in this Nest.js Angular environment, we can use the data transfer object and we can just easily extract that data from the request. So to do that, we can just add as a parameter to our create method here, we'll add the body and then we just supply the DTO that we want to grab. So we'll call that create post DTO and we'll give it a type of create post DTO, which is what we imported up here. And now with that added as a parameter, we'll be able to access that data inside of this method. So all we're going to do for now is just log, log out that create post DTO uh, in a real situation we would uh, be doing something with this data first uh, we would perhaps be uh, running a query against the database to add this uh, new post to the database or maybe we'd run some checks first or see if the user's authenticated or something like that uh, but basically at this point we have the data and we can do whatever we want with it uh, in this case because we don't have a database or anything like that set up uh, we're just going to log that out just to check that we can get and access that data so we're going to save this uh, server now. We're going to run it and I'm just going to open up an example Ionic application and we're going to try to access uh, this post route and we'll see if we get that data being logged out. Okay, so I've got the example Ionic application open now. Uh, I'm already serving that in the browser here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start the server our Nest.js server that we were just uh, we just finished coding. Hopefully that all runs fine. Uh, so it seems to be starting up okay, no errors, so that's a good sign. And what we're going to do is just in the home page. Uh, again, I like to always mention that it's usually not a good idea to run uh, HTTP requests from uh, your pages. It usually is better to add that to a service or something like that. Uh, but for the sake of the exercise, we're going to add in a post request just on this after view uh, init lifecycle hook, so it will run automatically. And since this is an Ionic application, we will first have to make sure we set up the HTTP client module uh, that is already imported and set up here, so that is fine. So now I just need to import the HTTP client from Angular common HTTP. I will need to inject that into the constructor here. And now I can make that request. So what I'm going to do is just run this dot uh, HTTP dot post. And so obviously we're using post now instead of get, and I'm going to make a request to localhost and the server's running over port 3000. And we want to make a request to the forward slash posts controller. And as well as making the uh, request to that particular URL, like we would with a get request, we also can supply the body of data that is being sent along with that. And so as I mentioned, and as we created with the data transfer object, we want to send through a message. So we'll just say, hello. And we also want to supply an author. I'll just use my name for that. And then we will just subscribe to any uh, result that gets returned to us. And it's also important to subscribe to uh, observables in order to trigger them. Uh, if you don't subscribe to this post, it actually won't trigger. So it's important to do that. So we'll just log that out. We aren't actually sending any data back at this point. Okay, so I'll jump back into the browser now. And you can see we get a, a null result there, which should be fine. We're not actually sending data back. Uh, but if we open up the uh, browser here, or rather the, the uh, terminal, uh, you can see in uh, the, the tab that's uh, the terminal tab that is running the server, we can see that message being logged out. So in our application, we just had a console.log statement 
uh, inside of that post route. And the point of that was to just log out any data that's being sent to the server. And you can see here that we have successfully got that message and author. So now from within that method, we could do whatever we like with that data. Okay, so that's the basic idea behind sending data to uh, a Nest.js server through a post request. You just need to create that data transfer object that describes the type of the data you want to send, and then just set up the uh, body decorator here with that DTO, and you'll be able to access the data uh, that's being sent through that request. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you again in the next video.